All right, welcome to another live stream from your old pal, Wizardfu. Today I'm working on the battleground still, carving things out. I'm taking the existing arena and I'm making it a little bit bigger. The battlegrounds have grown a bit just to make it kind of like the right size, feel like the right size. And um, now I'm carving out the lanes. So I'm making lanes between all the player different positions, trying out different diagonals and 90 degree things. Um, Let's get the camera rotated so it's at zero. This is where this is where zero is on the camera. Um, I've got this sort of center area here with these floating suits of armor for now, um, just to kind of indicate that that is the the center. And then these flames are representing where the temples will be. Um, and then up here, off on the corners, there's the suit of armor in each one of these player start locations. I call them homes. They're like the player homes. So I'm thinking now, uh, I've got this sort of uh, diagonal line going between the two. Player starts right there. And a straight line here. Um, so I'm thinking another diagonal comes here to the middle of this sort of lane up here. And then this will be sort of where, you, where you find an item. And then another diagonal up to this player. And just diagonals connecting all of this. I kind of think it would be really interesting to see these 45 degree angles. So... Um, and then, of course, once it's all set up, I'd really like to get an AI, a sim code up a simple AI so that we can see if it feels like it's about the right size. In fact, if I turn off God Mode here and run, right, does that feel like the amount of, a good amount of time from the player start location to this temple area right here? I don't know yet. We'll have to fill that out. So... Uh, let's get back into the math here, uh, or let's, you know, start coding. Um, I found out from earlier work today that this right here, I'm doing the homes with a um, Manhattan distance, and then I'm adding in two to make the center of it just right so that it aligns nicely with uh, the existing 45 and 90 degree pathways. But that's kind of throwing the rest of the math off. So I'm wondering if I could change that up a little bit. Or wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm adding two there. I could also take these 45s right here and add two. Let's see, let's see what that looks like. So. Oh, no, 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 wait. Okay, so that needs to be times sine i. Okay, okay, I got an idea. Let's go, let's get some other constants started here. Constant in sine x equals math sine i of ox. So we do a sine y as well. So I can use the sine pretty easily now instead of having to do, I already, I, I, some other places where I'm doing that and now I don't need it there I can just do sine y and that's sine x and up here we need to multiply this 2 by sine x And this is 2 times sine y. So hopefully that aligns the homes to be in the correct location because now it's being multiplied instead of just adding 2 because it, it's, all, it's all relative to the center of the arena. So when you're adding 2, it's um, making it closer to the center on the, on the left side of the, the uh, battlegrounds and farther away on the right side. So hopefully now it's it's consistent. So let's go back to God mode and we should see that, okay, this pathway is now in the wrong area, but, oh, okay, so that, that didn't help there. That didn't help there. Maybe on this side's, it's correct. Not quite, but maybe it is. Is that going straight to the center of that? Almost. 
plus two is just not quite. <sighs> I think the math should be better here. It should we shouldn't be trying to add this plus two magic. Um, for some reason, the pathways, the ninety degree pathways, and the forty fives coming from the center and all that, those should be more accurate. Ideally, so let's try for that. Um, this is gonna be some math heavy stuff, but let's do Let's take away that now we got some simpler math Hmm. See, this is kind of, this is weird. This 90 degree pathway right here. Yeah, see, this is the thing that's wrong. It's it's not pointing to the center, the very center of this right here. It's just too far. Yeah, th these 90 pathways are the things that need to change. This one, let's see. Yeah, this one's too high. And that one's too far. It's overshooting by two, basically. Or two times sine x. This one too. So we've overshot by two on the X. And we've overshot a little bit by on the Y as well. So it appears that well, I need to, you need to work on these 90 degree pathways first. These ones. Let's confirm that before I start editing this code. Um, it's easy to get start editing code and being like it didn't work, and then you go, and you edit it again to go it didn't work. And you edit it a third time, still doesn't work, and finally you realize oh I'm editing the wrong thing. We'll save ourselves that embarrassment. Ourselves being me and you. What's up, you? You like my freshwater system right here. Pretty sweet, right? Man, it's thirsty. Yes, okay, so we turned those off and we no longer have the 90s that are problematic. Okay. Now, why is abs ox minus home x zero? Oh. Could it be that the areas Let's try this a little, a little bit differently. Let's see if this math is wrong. Might be the math of the actual temple is wrong. Because I'm using this, this old kind of method of using the screen number and the screen offset, which is kind of different than the overall offset. The overall offset's really fun and easy to use. So let's do, let's do the distance from abs ox, abs oy, to the current, no, to the home x, zero, home y, zero. And this will, we'll change this math here too. So the center, will show the center point really nicely. 
So we're doing the distance from, oh yeah, same thing, so that equals zero. Hmm. Hopefully this creates some clues. Wow, very interesting. It has it did that did not move at all. So using that math, it can just kind of confirm the fact that this 90 degree pathway is the thing that's odd. It's not really that right there. Oh, wait a minute. I think I understand. These night where let's go to these 90s. Oh, yeah, that's that's got to be it. So we've got we've got the distance between that and the home x needs to be negative two to two inclusive. Is that between I include? Yeah, yeah, that's inclusive. Yo, PMC, what's up? Yeah, man, I remember you, of course. How you been? Yep, my hair's a lot longer. Life's a lot different. Whoa, the hay guys ain't working. How's the stream health doing? Is it is it everything good for on your end? Looks like I've got a good, really good connection here. I'm actually really lucky. I'm uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually traveling and and working and everything and living in a van right now. So I'm actually streaming to you on 4G, and um, I found this really lucky spot on top of a mountain. Usually, you when you're way out in nature, you never find like good internet. But luckily, I'm on top of the, well, it's a hill. I'm on top of a hill that has a cell phone tower like the next hill over. So I got this super rad internet out in out in nature right now, which I'm stoked about. I love this spot. Now, I've only found good internet in cities so far, but this is, this is sweet. Yeah, between I is inclusive, so we can do that negative two to two. Oh, I think this is the problem. I think this is what it was. Had to be it. Well, yeah, we'll be able to play around with other between eyes math as well. Instead of 0 to 4, 0 to 2, it needs to be like negative 2 to 2. No latency? Wow. Great, man. How, how are you, dude? What's up? What's up in your life, man? How's things going? Oh, sweet. This math just totally worked out now. So now we've got the center path right here. This path centering up or lining up with the center of these uh, temple fire pillars here. And also the center of the player starts. That's all lined up too. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> it did. Oh man. Yo, what's up, Pochetu? How's it going, Alessandra? Look, the whiz hat worked. But the hey guys. The hey guys ain't working today on my end. It's weird. Yeah, so I'm just carving up the arena right now, making things uh nice. This is the diag x. Oh, the diag x as well. This needs to be like negative two to two. This two. And I think we don't need to worry about this plus four nonsense right here anymore. Now that the math is really solid, yeah, yeah. You're doing good, finishing high school. Sweet. Wow, you're off to off to college. Wow. Nice to meet you again as well. We've we've met so many times on so many streams. Um, dude, congratulations. You're off to college soon. That's crazy. Oh, I love that part of life. But well, have I've been great? What went down after Songbringer's launch? Um, the launch went well. Uh, there was a DLC I did. So for s about six months after the launch, well, more like nine, I was working on uh, the, the DLC for Songbringer. And then I did the iOS version. And uh, the iOS version is still not out yet, but uh, that's because we've been trying to organize this beta. I've been trying to organize a beta. So I've now got the approval. Everything's all ready to go. We're ready to do this Songbringer iOS beta. Um, but since um, since about last June, so that's 
been also about nine months. I've been working on this new game here. Uh, this is called Wraithbinder, and it's basically like Songbringer, Songbringer's combat style, but with um, online play, and you get to just battle people. So you you battle to the death. So it's like Songbringer battles to the death. Yeah, and uh, and when you kill somebody, you control them, so they fight for you. So you don't actually die. You just turn into a, a creature that fights for your the person that killed you. So it should be interesting to see how this game turns out. It's a multiplayer game. There's always a lot. There's some risks involved in a multiplayer game that are a lot different than the risks you take making a single player game like Songbringer. Um, but I'm excited to make it, and I'm also to, excited to make Songbringer two after that. Um, so yeah, so I got some plans. I mean, it'll be. Uh, yeah, console launches, so, uh, Songbringer launched on, uh, if you're talking about Songbringer, uh, it launched on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch, that also happened last year, so Nintendo Switch released for Songbringer, that was, that was great, and, uh, yeah, this one will be on, so Wraithbinder will also be on consoles, I'm backed again by, uh, Double Eleven, who are the ones that helped me port Songbringer to consoles, they're still, uh, they're still down to work with me. I'm so down to work with them. They're amazing people. And uh, it's just, we got a great relationship. So why not? Um, yeah, so it's exciting to be where I'm at, making this new game and supported. You know, like just the feeling, the support of the universe. The universe has my back. And uh, hopefully I got the universe's back in whatever way I can. You know what I mean? Yeah, life's good. And uh, I'm, I just uh, I love doing what I do. I love making video games. It's a passion project. I will say that, you know, like, making video games is not making me rich. Um, hopefully one of these days it does. I do just strike the, the mother load and have some video game that kills it and makes me rich. I would love that. That'd be sweet. Um, but so far it's not. And most video game developers don't ever. Most video game developers make less than minimum wage. It's true. It's a fact. If you look at the number of hours that a game developer works on their game and compared to how much they usually make on average, it's it's like minimum wage. But uh, if you love what you do, I think that's a value that you can't really um, put money on. So I love what I do, and that's, that's great. I'm just going to stick doing this because I love it. All right, so let's do these 45 pathways. Let's make these a little bit nicer. We want this 45 to line up right there with the edge of that. Yeah, multiplayer is scary, um, but I will say this in consolation. I've done a multiplayer game before, so I know where the risks are, and I also know where the time-consuming parts of the video game will be. Because, uh, yeah, oh yeah, you remember? Yeah. So there's that. Yep, I did make a MOBA. Uh-huh. And the problem was I didn't market it at all. Like so, that was the just duh. You're not gonna you're not gonna get a, a player base if you're not doing any marketing. Uh, so I'm excited to have um, sort of a you know my own grassroots marketing. I do you know social media. Social media is a great way of marketing your video game if you do it well. Do it consistently. Oh, so the diag x needs to be a little bit less. Like this is 16 over four. Let's make that 14 over 4. I think that's what we need. Maybe 12 over 4. Yeah, life's good. And I also have this this uh, this van I'm living in, working and traveling in. And so I have like my, my computer is on like a monitor arm. I can put it up, put it down. I don't have a little uh, keyboard tray or anything I can use to stand up yet. So I'm always, I'm sitting down on most of today's streams. Today's era of streaming is not standing up right now. But soon enough, I'll have it all dialed in where this van is just like, I can sit, I can stand. Dude, 14 was exactly right. That's exactly what we wanted. 14. Boom. Okay, let's make sure that the 14 also works on the other side of the arena and the other side of the Y side. Yes, boom. Oh, this math is all working out way better. Yeah, and it's starting to have some constant integers in there so we can actually change just some constants and see the whole arena change its size and shape and all that. So that's good. 
<laughs> no, times have changed. Times have changed. But, uh, and people have changed too. I've changed. I've grown and changed. You've grown and changed too. We've all grown and changed a little bit. But I'm still the same person inside. Okay, so we want another diagonal line. Um, let's go, actually, I think I want this to be the diagonal x. Yeah, yeah, we'll just keep it at zero. I was thinking of changing that to be one, and the other one, this next one being zero, or the other way around. But that's not. That's just no. Okay, so diag x one. So this is kind of tricky. What this diag x here is a is a distance that we're drawing a diagonal line on. So it's oh we need to oh okay 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 we just yeah we need to move that the diag x one we need to move this line inward a lot by like a whole shoot a whole screen's worth almost instead of being being fourteen we need this needs to be like ten. Let's see what we got here. Diag x1. So we're drawing a diagonal line and then cutting it off to be a certain distance. Here we go. We need to emulate something like this. We'll start with just one. And we want to be, I think, I th D mid P, I think, is the one we want. D so D mid, yeah, D mid goes this way. D mid P goes that way. And we're trying to get another one of these kind of lines. So I think this needs to be D mid P. And we want D diag X1. Yeah, times sine Y. That's where this is. Uh, I was, really, I was the first stream you ever watched on Twitch? Wow. Wow. Man, I think you may be, I think you may be one of the only people that's ever, uh, Ever said that? Oh, oh, that was uh well. To tell you the truth, that that ended, uh, it ended, uh, it ended at a very difficult time for me. <laughs> hey, I'm new here. Right on. Yeah, I had a I had a girlfriend. Actually, she was my fiance. It was more than just a girlfriend. Um, shoot, yeah, it it. It uh, she broke up with me right after uh, right after I released Songbringer, like the week I released Songbringer. So I was, it's kind of a crazy ass time. It's the most stressful time of my entire life, releasing Songbringer, and then my fiance breaks up with me. It was like I was shattered. I was shattered, man. Um, so I spent six months kind of putting myself back together. I, I moved to Thailand, lived there for a while, made the DLC for Songbringer, and just kind of put the pieces of my my heart back together, you could say. But now I am much stronger than I've ever been, um, emotionally, relationship-wise. So yeah, things are looking way up. I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm freer than I've ever been. Stronger than I've ever been. My life is like going really well. Got my finances in order. Got my my physical body in order. I was really lightweight after that breakup, and now since that breakup, I've gained 30 pounds. I've been working out. So I've like I've really got my body weight back to something really healthy. I feel good. Um, so yeah. So there's that. There's a lot of things to be thankful for. In that regard, I'm gonna take off this last bit of that math there. Actually, we'll just do this because I want to see this entire line drawn. We got to get this line at just the right place, and then we'll restrict it to be a certain length and go between a certain two points. Um, yeah, but as far as relationships go, like, I'm starting to date again. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, I, I got on one of those apps. I think it's called Hinge. Yeah, no, it's called Hinge. Um, I tried Tinder for a while, but Tinder was just kind of, like, cheesy. But Hinge seems to have some good, uh, some good, you know, like, it's, it's it seems better. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'll eventually find a relationship again, but I'm not in any hurry. I'm happy to be myself and be the who I am and doing what I'm doing, just the way I'm doing it. Oh, wait a minute. If we, 
oh, okay, this might be interesting because we're going to see like a little zigzaggy line going right here. Yeah, so this line right here, we want to move this over so where it's ex it's extending off at a diagonal right there. This, yeah. Wait a minute, we could just draw a straight line between these. Now that they're right there and there. And then we could do a straight line. Oh, this one's a little... Huh. Should we do a straight line? Dude, the straight line might actually be better than two diagonal lines in this case. I think actually a diagonal would be kind of cool to see a diagonal going that way and then this way. Or maybe even from the back side of the player's home. Like a diagonal goes this way and then that back up there. Or maybe it goes diagonal for a little bit, straight, and then diagonal. Hmm. I'm thinking the straight, maybe. Yeah, let's try straight. So we're going to go from abs ox minus home x1 is negative 2 to 2. And uh, the abs oy is less. Yeah. That's, I think that's it. Oy is less than home y1. So I don't drink coffee anymore. For, for the, during all of Songbringer, I wasn't drinking coffee. But then, uh, well, the, for the DLC part of the song, I started drinking coffee. I got addicted to coffee, man. Coffee is like, whoa, coffee! You know, it's just some good stuff sometimes. So um, now I am uh, I had to stop drinking coffee again because coffee does some crazy stuff to my heart. It gives me heart palpitations. It's not good. It's not good at all. So I need to um, go easy and not take coffee anymore. And in order to do that, I have um, started drinking this mushroom blend called Coffee Break, and it really does the trick. It almost tastes like coffee. It actually tastes better than coffee, I think. In high school, you went out with this god girl who's way out of your league? You broke up with her? Oh, man. Oh. Well, you know what I've learned about regret? Um... Maybe this helps, maybe it doesn't. But regret, and I think is just think of your you you know you know about programming. Programming, you get these errors and you get warnings. When you're building your code, you're compiling it, you get a warning that tells you, hey, this code might be a little bit funky. You also get errors where it's saying the code the compiler saying, yo, no, this this, this doesn't work. You gotta try something else. I think regret is kind of one of those little warning flags inside your heart or inside your soul or your mind, whatever. Um, but it's a warning flag. It's like it's like yourself trying to tell you, hey, there's something here you need to pay attention to. You need to figure this out, man. Find a way to resolve this regret. How could you how could you resolve this regret, right? So and, you know, I maybe take as take that advice for something <laughs> you could you could sit down and sort of like think about what why you might have the regret and what you could do to not have the regret anymore right because your yourself your subconscious mind you're trying to help yourself you're giving yourself this emotion for a reason you're feeling that emotion for a reason that regret so what is that reason and how can you move on past it right once you find a way past it, you don't need it anymore. And then you won't have the regret anymore because you won't need it. Uh, so that's my philosophy on negative emotions. <laughs> Take it for what it's worth. All right. Um, that's, I think this needs to be home Y0, actually.
Yeah, slow down, right? Oh, it was recent. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Cool, slow down, right. Oh, there we go. Cool. We've got a nice pathway going between these these guys. I maybe think this should be a little more narrow, though. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Ah, that's good enough. Loud is. So if I, was st if I was this player starting at this location, I would have three choices. I could go this way to the temple. I could go this way up to this other player, or I could go straight down to this player. And maybe there's like a, maybe, yeah, maybe there's an item right here. Or right here, actually, this could be a good location for an item. Like we could carve out a little bit of this right here, and then a little open area right here, and we're, that we're, that's where an item would be. So if you're a player, right, and you're like, huh, and you know the map already, because this map isn't really going to change. Um, you know the map, so you go, oh, I know I can go straight up and go for the item. But maybe this guy's going for the item, too. So you battle. This is what I, what I want. Is you, I want lots of situations where, you're, where it, you, you're, you get into battle situations with others. So we can put another item right here, too. This would be cool. Location. So if you're this player, you'd be like, oh, I want to go for that item. Or that item, and that that's cool because if you have two items you could go for for every player, then that's like a a lot of situations where you could accidentally run into somebody. You learn from your mistake, cool. Right, learn not to force a relationship. Got you, yeah. Good man, I'm so glad you you're learning from it. Yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from my last relationship too. Gosh, can't believe all the stuff I didn't know before this, but now I know. Okay, so that worked. Let's do another line. We want a line from abs o y home y one to abs o x home x zero. Oops. There we go. So hey, where are you going to college, PMC? What's the uh, what's on your radar for that? We'd better get started, yeah. Alright, we got a line there. We should have a line here. Yeah, yeah, we got a line here now. Sweet. This is feeling pretty nice and balanced. I like this. Every one of the players has three choices of where they could head to. And all of them could lead to them fighting someone else. And uh, in here, if I turn off God mode, how far of a distance is this to walk? Yeah, it's not that far. This might be a small arena right now, but we've got constants set for all these different arena elements, so I could change it, maybe make it a little bit bigger. I'm thinking probably it will need to be a little bit bigger. We've got a little bit of distance left here on the edge of the arena, too, we can take up. There's a lot of distance out here in this edge right here. In fact, we could make it a little bit bigger. Mount Royal? Oh, Mount Royal. Where? Oh, I don't know where that is. Going to start... Paramedics? Wow. Yeah, programming and game dev is your passion. Awesome. Ah, uh, well, I, I wish you... I wish you the best, man. Yeah, all right, cool. 
That's good, man. That's good you know that about yourself, too. If you if you enjoy programming, but for now it's sort of like a hobby, then you know yourself. That's, that's great. Oh, Calgary. Sweet. Oh, I'm going up to Canada this summer. I'm going to BC. I'm, my, my aim is to be in British Columbia for all of July and August. I'm really excited because I love Canada. I love those the mountains of BC and the sea and the ocean right there. Ah, oh, yeah, I can't wait. I'll take this van up there and code. Keep coding the game, but be near some sweet nature. Yeah, BC is beautiful. Yeah, super excited about it. There's something I have open that shouldn't be open. Oh, we could close Xcode. This is always using a little bit of CPU. I need to get a new laptop still. Um, oh yeah, game, uh, game show. Oh, there you go, that's a little bit better. Oh, Backblaze. Backblaze, Backblaze is killing it right now. We gotta turn off Backblaze. Yeah, Banff. I want to get to Banff for sure. Yeah. The Calgary Stampede? Tell me about this. What's the Calgary Stampede? I need to add this to my, I have a little script that runs every time I start streaming. I need to make my script so it turns off black backblaze somehow. I don't need to be backing up while I'm streaming. What is kernel tasks eating up so much CPU for? Indie worker's still going. That's a backblaze thing. Damn, that, that kills the CPU, CPU like crazy on this old laptop. The biggest outdoor show in the world! <laughs> Whoa! The Calgary Stampede? It's huge, huh? I imagine there's there's animals stampeding. You almost got in a fight? Oh man. You you were actually banned from the grounds? Damn. Sounds wild. God, this makes me want to go. Yeah, I like that. I like these lines. Let's do another line. For, um... Actually, yeah, let's do item... Items. Let's start with items. We just want to do... Little location. You'd recommend it? Sweet. When uh, when is it? What's what uh what's the date for that? Definitely. Definitely. We can meet up for sure. Um Yeah, what's the date on it? Okay, so we want a little circle. Um, the middle, if so, this is the distance, oh, the distance to zero on the X and home Y, home Y zero. Yeah, yeah, this is right. And then we do maybe like, this is like a small circle, so like less than seven-ish. See if we got some holes there. It's July? Oh, man. Oh, I might actually be able to even make that. It depends. Depends on how far of a drive it is. Because I'm going to be in Oregon at the end of June. So it depends on how far of a drive it is from June to 
or f yeah, at the end of June, f from Oregon to to there to the Calgary Stampede. Oh no, we wanted this hole a little farther down, so we need Y one, or no, not Y one, but like a blend of Y Y one and Y zero actually. So yeah, let's blend those math, uh, mix uh, I. We want home y0 and home y1 and mix by a half. Dude, I'll be I'll be keeping that in mind. Uh it sounds wild. The Calgary Stampede. Maybe I can swing that. All right, so the whole, yep, yeah, there we go. We want that hole right there. Boom, perfect. And now we'll do a straight line right here to get into it. We also want to do another one at uh, that and zero there, and these are both X's. And then we want to do some straight lines. O X minus, no, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, O, O, O X minus zero. This is this O X? Nope, it's just O X entirely. If O X between negative two and two, and the abs O Y is less than or equal to home y1 and this thing yeah this needs to be a this needs to be another variable here we need home 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 y2 and home y home x2 Actually, we'll call this home one five. That kind of makes it a little more clear, I guess. Or we can make all the home home X's. Home X two. Oh, nah, yeah, we'll do one five for now. Nope, nope, if I change, shoot, I should change it now. All right. Let's rename these variables here. So we want home something one. We change that to ah. The Red Sea? Wait a minute, Canada has a Red Sea? Your hockey team came in second. Oh wow! Really? It's the street you guys walk on when you win a game. Oh, and it's called the Red Sea. That's sweet. How did it get the name the Red Sea?
Yeah, right on. I'm down for some of that. Oh, your home jersey is red. Oh, so it's like a sea of people wearing red. I get it now. There we go. Now we got those mixed and this is home X. Whoa, home X, home Y1. This one is home, uh, home X1. And this is abs F abs. O Y is greater than or equal to home Y1 and less than or equal to home Y2. Okay, so that should give us a 90 degree pathway coming from those little item niches to the lane connecting the players. What was that warning? We're not using Diag X1? Oh yeah, we're not using Diag X1 at all. Sweet, it worked. All right, we have a little area and we have a lane. Cool, I like that. We'll see if I, what we got over here, if we got a little lane item. Yep, we got the item location, we see the lane, uh, which is just the same thing as this, except we've got if the OY is like that, and this is the OX, X, 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 four X's. You like Wraithbringer? Oh, it's Wraithbinder. Wraithbringer would be cool too. But it's Wraithbinder because you bind wraiths. How long do I think matches will be? Well, considering the size of this battleground so far, I want the battlegrounds to be small enough that the matches are pretty quick. So I'm hoping that matches are 10 to 15 min minutes. But maybe every once in a while you come up with an awesome match that's just epic and it lasts 20 to 30 minutes, right? But 30 minutes I'm hoping is about the max. Um, I do have plans for the, the Battlegrounds to shrink over time so that there is an actual ultimate time limit to the match. Because, uh, you know... It sucks being a player if you're like you you're not into the match and you're you're still having to kind of play the match because you're a wraith, you know, for some other person. Um, yeah, so the plans are to make it free to play right now. I'm not sure if that might change. Who knows? They may, might 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 find a way to make it sort of like a hybrid free to play and also sort of you know paid, see like a paid download version i don't know i don't know we'll see when we get there but probably it'll be free to play and yeah there'd probably be a switch version i can't commit to any console versions at this point you know don't take my word for a, bo a bind or a bounding uh don't take my word as contract at this point because i'm not exactly sure what the console situation will be in the end it will kind of like make that call my publisher and i when uh when it gets closer, when we, we have some more information, when we see how this game is like evolving, right? As it gets through its beta stage, because it'll be beta pretty soon, like, well, not bit soon, but relatively soon compared to like making Songbringer. So like by this Christmas, I'm hoping to have an early beta version possibly for some of you uh, hardcore followers and fans and viewers or just viewers that have been with me for a long time not necessarily hardcore but we've known each other for a while right why not hop into my private beta as soon as possible so like uh hopefully by christmas we have this be able to be playable multiplayer um but that might be too aggressive of a goal who it might be more like early spring next year um so but yeah there's that what did I just... Oh, right. Oh, I was just commenting out the Diag X1 and Y1. Okay. Let's see if we got those pathways from these other little item stashes. So that means we have four items on the screen. And we should also have maybe four more. Yeah, cool. We got a pathway right there. 
cool. So we can put an item there. And that means this player can run and... Huh. I wonder if... I wonder if this pathway should actually just continue on to there. Because then you could get at this item from lots of different ways. You could get at the item right here. Or maybe, oh, maybe there's a 45 right there and a 45 right here that take you to this item from the temples. That's kind of cool. And then where would that, where would an, if, there's a lot of empty space left here in these top left corner and the top right corner. Yeah, I think a 45 right there would be sweet. Because then there's several ways to get it. Well, wait a minute. Then if you're if, so, if you're a player, you're starting here, and you go to the temple, and you're like, ah, oh, I'm bored with the temple, and you could you could run back this way to get the item. Oh, but you know what? What's kind of cool about having these dead ends is that you could create a, a nice battle. You could have a nice battle with somebody else, being like, whoa, check it out! I, I trapped them. They're they're here getting the item and boat and. You have the advantage because you're trapping them, but they have the advantage because they have the item. So that could lead to some good fights. Yeah, I kind of like this whole, like, dead-end style item locations. Because if I put, if you put any kind of egress, any pathway outward, you're not going to be able to, tr you're not going to be trapped when you're going for the item, which is, which I kind of, I want that trade-off, right? You're, should I, you have this, this, debate in your mind like should I go for the item I'm gonna be somewhat trapped I'm gonna be exposed well not exposed but trapped yeah sweet I really like the way this is shaping up okay we're gonna leave that for now but what else do we need what else is this sort of, sort of overall design need There's still a lot of room battling in those corners. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try out putting out four more items in the corners. Let's check in so far, because this is really great. This is some good code. Look how organized and clean it is. <laughs> I'm joking because there's so much commented out nonsense and stuff. But Oh yeah, okay, we'll keep all that stuff, all this nonsense. But we'll check it in so far. So we got right, we did that. We added some a lot more of these constants. We added a lot more pathways and uh it's good. Okay. Commit that. Okay, so let's run it one more time. So I'm, I want to look at it and see, should we try, should we go for 90 degree pathways on this or 45, probably 90. So if we go up here to either one of these players location starts. We could have a path going straight up to about here, an item about here, and then a path straight over to this player that would mean that this player has four choices. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, I know. I know what to do. I know what to do. So it's really cool how we have the dead ends right here between these players, but we don't have any dead ends up here. So we need a 45 coming off right there and then a dead end for the item. And that will give us some good, efficient usage of this uh, space, which isn't being utilized there. And still, we have only three choices for every player when they start and we have the similar thing where we, if you go left you've got an item dead end and then if you go right you also have another item dead end okay that's good so 45 degree pathways this is oh this is 
This is exactly D mid. No, it's not exactly D mid. But we do need some of this some of this D diag X1 E stuff. And I think it needs to be something really low, like two over four. Okay, so we want to do a, a 45 degree pathway. Okay, so we're going to do items with 45 degree pathways. We'll start with just the location of the item. Which is, I think it's home X1, home Y1. Let's see. No, 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 it's home X2, home Y2. Okay, so first we want to see if we got the the open space or the di the diamond shape for the the item location. Then we'll work on the pathways to it. All right, cool. We got it. Boom. There it is. We just want a diagonal pathway up to it, and we should have all four of them. Yep. Sweet. Okay. All right. 45 degree pathways. 45s are based on di um, the di uh, here we go, like these D mid type things. This is what we need. Actually, this is exactly what we need, right? Oops. Yeah, we need that bit of code. And uh, okay, so a D mid. Um, D mid P is the line from the lower left to the top right. Let's start with D mid then. We want the top left down to the bottom right. And we're going with diag X one times sine Y. I think that might need to be Y and this might need to be X. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna carve a line through the entire arena. So we're gonna see a huge slash, uh, but you know we'll contain the line later. We'll get this line in the right place first. No, oh, almost, almost. Wow. Okay, so that was 12 over 4. Luckily, the math was right, too. The, the X and the Y part. Okay, so that's 2 over 4. I think it needs to be 4 over 4. It might be 0 over 4. No, it's probably 0 over 4. Oh, yeah. This is probably wrong. But I like this style of mathematics. Guess and check. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. I'm a real guesser and checker. Yep, it was definitely zero. Okay, that's just zero. We don't even need to... Oh, wow. We don't even need this constant at all. We don't need it. Don't want it. Don't need it. Gonna, gonna toss it. The zero is probably right. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Zero. Don't need that. Um, and we need we need to just be it's just D mid. And we're gonna now we need to contain it. So we need to contain the line between oh abs. Good thing we have this whole X1 thing, because I think it's abs home X1 and home Y1. No, wait, no no no. If abs OX is is greater than or equal to home X1 and abs OX is less than or equal to home X2. And then we need to do a similar thing for Y. Oops. 
Oops. Uh, I was trying to do a shortcut there, but ended up being a long way. Okay. Let's see if that works on the first try. Whoa, what's this slash doing here? How did that even compile? Oh, it's one of those slashes that's like telling me that's, that line continues. Lucky slash. Lucky slash placement there. Yes, it worked. Oh my god. It worked on the first try. I feel like a mathematical stud today, which is not at always the case. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Sweet. That worked too. All right. So we need two of these bits of code. Make that again. I mean, this is going to be D mid P. And these are just the same. Oh. Wow, I hope that worked too. What time is it here? I don't have too long to stream today. It's 4.15. Still got a little bit I can stream for. Okay. Oh, we already did this one. That one's good. Uh, yep, all right, it worked. We've got this nice pathway here. So there's a nice sense of balance here. We've got the player has three choices, and every, every player has three choices, and every player, two of every player's three choices uh, will lead to an item dead end where a fight could happen, and the fight could probably be interesting because of the dead end de dynamic going on there. So yeah, we've got this pathway here. We got eight items. Um, how many players we got? One, we got one, two, three. Oh shoot, we might only have eight players. Oh, there's only eight players. I, w I was originally planning on ten players. Maybe it'll just be eight players, because I really like this this symmet the symmetrical ness of this. Eight players and one boss. It's kind of like nine players. Cool. Okay, let's we'll check that in. In fact, let's take away all the code we're not using. Because this is kind of cool. And we'll check this in. Okay, the next thing, the next most important thing is to see if the arena is about the right size. I mean, I can always, I can always like figure something out for how I can add two more players. Well, I guess that's part of all this right now. Yeah, we need to, de the overall size of the arena really needs to be dialed in. That's, that's most important. I wonder what it would be like if I zoom way out. I kind of want to see more of the arena at once.
Oh, all oh, right. We have the old uh, frame buffer thing going on, so we can't really zoom out. Like if I could, I could figure out how to zoom out, but it's gonna. T that would take a while. But is that? That's actually kind of helping. Hold on a second. Let's leave this at 1.0 for today's stream. And at least we won't be at 0 0.75, so we'll see a little bit more. Okay, yeah, that's that's a little bit better. I can definitely like uh, feel like I'm building the arena a little bit, little bit better, being able to see more of it. Okay, I'm really, I'm interested in seeing what it would be like if the players' home locations were moved out a little bit, and maybe even the the flames, the temple locations were moved out a little bit too. So. Let's try, let's try and mess around with that math. See if it uh, see mess around with these constants and see if this is better. So this is ten over four. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah, it's a free for all where players gather items and kill each other. Yeah, so it's like a battle royale game basically, um, but. The, tr the twist is, when you die, when you're killed by another player, you become a wraith, a, a ghost, bound to that player. So you, you keep on fighting in the match, but you're sort of like this different creature. You're a wraith. Um, but from then on, you cannot damage the person that killed you. You can only damage other players. So you're basically fighting for the person that killed you. Um, where the boss... The boss twist too. That's a boss is also a twist. So at the center of the arena, there's the boss. Um, if you fight the boss and win, if you kill the boss, you become the boss. So you actually Im turn your wraith into the boss. You get to control the boss's character and do some badass damage and stomp over people because you're the boss. <laughs> um, but if you're killed by the boss, you become a wraith bound to the boss. So you actually. Uh, will be controlled by the AI monster that is the boss, right? Unless you're killed by the boss and the boss is already a player. If the boss is already a player, then you're basically being controlled. No, you're, not, you're not really being controlled. You're just on the side of the boss. You can't hurt the boss any longer. If you're a wraith bound to the boss, you can't hurt the boss. You can only hurt other players. So... So yeah, it should be interesting how that all works out. Like it's different than any other battle royale game that I've seen so far. Hopefully, by the time I actually release this game, there won't be another game that tries to do this or does this concept, uh, and then it'll be a unique concept. That'd be sweet. Um, what I'm hoping it will be because a lot of game developers that are AAA companies would like to stay with the proven formula, so they're not going to mess up the whole battle royale formula. Um, and but hopefully, no other indies do it before I do it, and then I'll have something unique on my hands. Uh, so it's a, it's kind of a risk for me even t talking about it right now, because it's going to take me a year to make it beta, and then another year to make it out of beta. So it's going to be a while before it's done. Why don't you just leave the game? Um, you don't, you don't want to leave the game because you're still a wraith. You get to fight on. You get to play, you get to play for, um, you get to play for the, you get to play on. You know what I mean? And, and also, it, the reason you don't want to leave is because you're going to get a loss. So every one, of your, any, every one of your games is either a win, a draw, or a loss. A win is technically plus one score. A draw is plus zero score. You don't, your score doesn't change. Um, and, the score, and by score, I mean your ranking on the leaderboard, right? Your, your, your score determines your ranking. So you get plus one for a win, you get zero for a draw, you get minus one for a loss. Anyone that drops out immediately gets a minus one. They get a loss. Um, and so you get a so you're you're incentivized basically to stay in the in the match, but I because if you stay in the match, you're probably gonna get a plus one or a zero. In fact, I think I'm I think the way I designed it, you you cannot get a minus one unless like it's it's hard to get a minus one if you actually stay for the whole match. I forget I forget the details, but uh you're you're basically incentivized to stay in. 
because of your your ranking you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah, and it's it should be kind of unique into smaller scale type of battle royale. Most battle royales are huge maps, tons of players. This is like eight to ten players and smaller match smaller battlegrounds. And there's a boss, and you get a you get a fight on even though you're dead. So All right, so let's try this X2 being Home X1 could even be something else. Like this is this would be 4 over 4. We could do this being 8 over 4. 6 over 4. Let's try 6 over 4. And then this will add 4. Let's try making that 14 over 4. And then this diag X this is going to need to change to be possibly 18. I'm not sure what that needs to be. Oh, so when you become a Wraith, you become a projectile base? Oh, no. You stick with melee. So, yeah. Um, so, imagine it's all like Songbringer. So, you, you, when, you're a, when you're a human, not a Wraith, you have a sword, you have a shield, you have your little skybot, you have a boomerang like your top hat was in Songbringer. And a lot of the items you can pick up are like bombs and stuff like that. So essentially, every player is going to have a sword, a shield, and a boomerang. So they fight, you fight with that originally. And then when you become a wraith, you ju you're just restricted to melee combat. So you can't pick up boomerangs. You can't. Uh, um, you will have a shield. You have some kind of shield ability still too. Um, so yeah, there's uh, so that's how you that's how combat works. You're basically still a, you're a melee fighting wraith. You don't have projectiles. Oh no, but you can upgrade. Sorry, there's one other twist. Um, and do you have to stick with the person who killed you? You can leave. You no, know, you don't have to. You don't have to stay by the player that killed you. You can go roam around the entire arena and fight other players. The only thing you can't do is hurt the player that killed you. Um, and so, so you're, you're a wraith, you become, you start with melee, right? But you can upgrade your wraith. So you, there's four temples. There's a fire temple, an ice temple, a lightning temple, and an acid temple. All the, four out of the five elements from Songbringer. And, um, if you take your wraith, your wraith to one of those temples, you can upgrade it to become, you can get these projectile based range based attacks so your fire might be you shoot out fire your lightning maybe you shoot out chain lightning stuff like that so you can become a more powerful wraith um, but if you die as a wraith you lose your upgrades and you become a regular wraith again so so there's that I forgot about that twist forgot about mentioning that to, to people so that was too far All right, cool. We still have uh This is kind of pushing it to its limits almost. That's about a, about how far this this arena size can accommodate. Somehow all these 45s all worked out perfectly too. Wow, that was kind of lucky. Okay, so I now I need to determine if is this about the right size? Because this kind of this works, right? Everything fits. Things are a little bit farther spaced out. Okay, let's. I'm gonna turn off God mode. Um, well, first I'm gonna start at uh, one of the player starts. Turn off God mode. Okay, so I'm starting. I'm a player. I have the choice of going north here to the the west or this diagonal up to the northeast. Maybe I go here. And I go for this item. I get the item, and then oh, there's another player, and I have a battle. I'm fighting another player. Uh, I kill him. Sweet. He's my wraith. He goes wandering off. Um, so I know that probably was this player, so I probably wouldn't have gone that way. So I probably would have gone back to my own home. And maybe, uh, maybe I'm trying to go for another item. And then I get over here, 
and I realize, oh, this some player already got this item. Shoot. Um, this is kind of feeling about the right size. So I go back, I go to this temple. There's this temple too. And maybe now I want to go fight the boss. So I go here and the boss appears. I'm like, oh, I'm having this crazy boss battle. And then another player comes in and kills me. Boom, I'm dead. And the boss is still there. And I, now I'm a wraith. I'm fighting for that player that killed me. Um, the player is attacking the boss. The player kills the boss, and the player is now the player is now that boss. So now I'm a wraith bound to the boss. But I can go wherever I want. So maybe I'm going over here. I'm like, yeah, give me the ice power. So I'm at the ice temple, and now I'm now I'm an ice wraith. I roll. I wander around looking for other players to kill. Yeah, this feels like about the right size. About the right size map. I like this. And now we're using we're efficiently using the entire the entire arena, and just about no part of the arena is like. Maybe there should be some more slashes. Right? We could put a slash. Like we could put a diagonal line going right there to nothing. It's just an area right here. Maybe that's a teleport. Oh yeah, I could put some teleports. Some teleports would be sweet. So you could like go in here in this little pathway. There's an area right here where you can teleport across the arena to this other location. Maybe there. That might be interesting. We've also got some space. We could carve a niche right there too. Hmm. Yeah, you can have up to seven other wraiths. Seven. No, you can have up to six other wraiths. As long as because once you kill all seven other players, you win. So, um, but yeah, you could be. It could get crazy unbalanced. This could be a totally unfair game, uh, which I'm hoping is an interesting thing. Uh, they're having this crazy about a momentum, right? If you could get you get going and you have like, cause it, I guess having players as a wraith is um is an advantage, right? It should be an advantage, but technically it might not be an advantage. Maybe those other players suck and they're not helping you at all. And so having wraiths might not be that unbalanced. Actually, you might be killing it by the fact that you've killed six other players, but maybe that seventh player is really good, and it doesn't matter that you have wraiths. So yeah, so hopefully this leads to something kind of an interesting way to approach this kind of game, this kind of last man standing wins kind of game. So this is moving the player start locations out a little. Okay, we're gonna go for one more little diagonally line where we could have some teleport locations. Or maybe, maybe actually the teleports will be, right? Maybe the teleports are actually up here, way in the far corners. So that's not an item. Maybe there's four items and four teleports. So this teleport would take you all the way across the other side of the arena. That would be really interesting, actually. Yeah. But if the arena does shrink over time, it would kind of, well... Yeah, I guess if the arena is shrinking, it would, it would you wouldn't be able to use the teleport. But on the other hand, if the arena is shrinking, you're also not going to need to use the teleport as much if the arena is getting smaller. But I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna carve one more 45 degree line right here, and see how that feels. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. It might be a good place for an, an alternate teleport.
Okay, so the abs OX, abs OY from uh Uh, we need a home. It's like home X O five. Um, oh, so yeah, there's a playable zone and, uh, you can't get outside of it. It's more, it's more like an actual just barrier that moves inward. So, so you can't, you can't actually cross outward out towards it so you're not you're not like dying or losing health you just can't get past it i'm thinking maybe like and it pushes you inward if you're standing right at the edge of it it pushes you inward a little bit it might be fun to try it at actually where it kills you though that might be neat too it's a uh, certainly a worth the experiment So let's do home X O five and that's just like something like that. Okay, let's see if this is in the right place. Ooh, getting hungry. Getting time for dinner. But I'm gonna finish this last bit here. These teleport, teleport locations. Oh, put it right there. No, I wanted it up here. Okay, so this needs to be home X O five. Oh, this is this is a weird. All right. Um, is that home Y? It's not home Y one, and it's not home Y two. Wait, is it home Y one? Might be home Y one. Hold on. Oh, very nice. That's exactly what I wanted. Amazing. Okay. Uh, but it's a little bit big. Let's make that less than six. Maybe even five. And now we need to diagonal line to go to that. So we'll start with the diagonal line. And... This is D mid, okay, D, no, this is D mid P, um, minus, um, home, Y1, times, sine X, I'm pretty iffy on that, <laughs> so, let's hope. Let's cross our fingers and then guess and check some more. Oh, okay. So we carved a line. Oh, it's it's a little bit off, but it is very close. Shoot, that's awesome. Okay, so home X1 was close, but we needed a little bit farther. So that was somewhere between 6 and 12. It had to have been 9, and we need a little farther out. Let's see if home X2 is actually the right line there. Home Y2. Mm 
Don't worry about your heavy load. Sweet. Yes, that's exactly the line I wanted. Okay, let's contain that line. Wait a minute, that's kind of cool. I kind of like seeing that line there. That's that's cool. I mean, it's hmm. All right, it's kind of neat. I mean, not this last part of it right here, but this part is kind of neat. You've got this angle going off to there instead of having. That's pretty neat, actually. I like that a lot. Because then, if you're a player and you go for this, you're like, boom, I got the item. Then you don't have to go back all the way to your home screen. You can go up this line to that temple. But it, it does need to, I think it needs to stop here. It can't go past, can't go past that. No, no, that's, that would make this whole player situation here. Okay. Technically, wouldn't we want, uh, hmm. Hmm, to so make this connect or not. Yeah, I'm going to go with my original instinct of making this line stop here and not... This one's kind of nice. Why, why does that one look nice to me? If I rotate the arena, there we go. And now we have this other line over here. Oh, that's a... Why is this one so long? This one doesn't seem as long. I think if I, if I close it off right here, so you can't go over there, it'd be, it, you also need to close off this one too. Oh, in fact, maybe there is, maybe there is like a little extra little area right here. Let's see what it's like closing it off to where I kind of had thought. So if abs O X, hmm, let's, <laughs> that might be the right math already. No, it's definitely gonna have to be based on home X O five. Yeah, that just that ruined it. That killed it. The line's gone. Completely gone. Why is that? It should be somewhere. Hmm. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, but this is this needs to be O five. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. We got part of it. Oh, weird. Oh, because I'm using like a an odd number, I think, for the size of this little area there. It's not lining up perfectly. Oh, that's oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. A little slash right here, and a little area right there with a slash. Okay, let's see if we can make it the right size, too. You know, <laughs> I have not, I have, I've actually, I've played PUBG 
but I've never really gotten into it. I've only like briefly played it. Um, so it's it's not really inspired by any battle royale games. Um, it's inspired tr truly by I was trying to think of a way to make Songbringer style combat in a multiplayer game. I just wanted I was like the, and that made the most sense like Songbringer, last person left alive wins. So, uh, but you know I mean pff, it, PUBG and Fortnite I guess are two of the biggest and those are the only ones I would. I really, I've been meaning to play Fortnite. I have not ever played Fortnite, and I'm like, everybody's, it's so hot right now, everybody loves it, so I really should play Fortnite, at least to get some inspiration from that, because maybe I'll get some great inspiration that can make this game better or more unique by actually playing Fortnite or playing PUBG a little more. Yeah, I hope, I hope, I hope by not playing, and maybe I am bringing a fresh take on it, hopefully that is, that's the reality. <laughs> Oh, I did an even number. Yeah, so hopefully with an even number, we've got a, a nice sized hole there. Oh, it's the same thing. Well, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Let's put that back to how it was. Oh, wait, did I not change anything? I thought that was five. Fortnite's good? Oh, yeah, winning wasn't that rewarding for you? Huh. So, so I can understand everyone's already better at Fortnite. But what was it about uh, the winning not feeling rewarding to you? What was it about that? Like, how can you define why that was? Why it wasn't so rewarding? Cool. Then we see one more forty-five degree line. Oh. Gotcha. Winning's a victory screen, but that's pretty big. That's a pretty big point. I didn't know that. Only the last person would see you that w that you won, because everyone's ditching out of the game as soon as they die. Gotcha. Wow. That's a really good point. That's kind of why I'm one thing. I guess I'm trying to make this game unique in the sense that you continue on after you die. So hopefully, you're the, everyone. So everyone comes to the victory screen together. Or the victory or defeat, whatever, the final screen. Yeah, you quickly, of course you do. Yeah, you're like, dude, I'm done with this. I I died. I'm starting another one. Okay, let's flippy floppy all these around and hope that's... Uh, you know, actually, all we need to flippy floppy is that. D mid, home X2, sign Y. Cool, we got a little slash there, slash here. Yeah, and a connection down to this one. I'm still really curious why it's not. Huh, why, why is it centered? Oh well. Yeah, if you didn't win, you lost, but when you feel like you did it all right, having a 15 kill game yeah, you feel bad when you don't get to do it the next time. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that a lot of Fortnite is actually based on luck. Like, they actually programmed it to be that way. Like, all your shots, like, almost, yeah. Like, I, I heard this. I don't know if it's true, but in Fortnite, there's a random number added to every one of your bullets. Like, every one of your shots, like, um, is controlled by a random number. So... You could be the best player in the world and have a perfect shot lined up, 
and it adds a random number and so you miss. Um, or you could be the worst shot in the world and you're, you're not even aiming at them and it adds a little bit of random number and you hit the person. So, and the, the reason they did that from what I heard, there's some a YouTube video that told, that kind of claimed all this, but, uh, the reasoning is that adding those random numbers makes it better for new players. It kind of makes it worse for the better, the better players that have been around longer that they're shooting straight, but the new players that are shooting like shit. Uh, they're helped by the random numbers because sometimes they hit and they're like, "Woo, I hit them," even though they really weren't aiming right. So I don't know. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. But that's the Fortnite secret, from what I've heard. Okay, this. Uh, yeah, it renders the stats useless, right? This is good. I'm really happy with how this turned out today. And I think this is going to be it for this stream. I'm just going to check this in here. Commit these systems. Add some teleport and other 45 slashes. Right. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. You're not. You're not. You're not automatically getting a minus one because you became a wraith. You can actually. So I think the way I lo I logically worked it so you you could, if you die you become a wraith to the person that player the person that killed you, but if if your player wins, right? You're a wraith bound to this one player and that player wins. You also get a win. So. Um, and then the player that actually really wins, the player that actually was alive and laughs, gets the MVP. So that's that's one other thing. So you have a score, which is like plus one, zero, or minus one, but there's also an MVP of every match. So if you, you're the actual technical winner, you're the last player left alive, you're the MVP, but you can still get a plus one win because you're on the team, you're on the side of the player that won. So yeah, you're not you're not losing points just because you die. You can actually still get a win, even though you're dead. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the concept behind it all. Is like rewarding players, even though rewarding players for sticking through to the end of the match. Really, is what it's all about. Yeah, like you get for for sticking through to the end of the match, even though you you die, you still can get you can still get a plus one on your ranking. I think it might have worked out so that I might have worked it so that you. I, I I wrote a design document about this, but like I think the MVP might get plus two or something like that. So you win, you get a plus one. But if you're the MVP, you you get a plus two. Yeah, PMC, you're bringing up a really good point, man. I didn't because like, because I haven't played Fortnite or PUBG that much. I didn't know this, but thank you for bringing this up. Uh, this is going inside my brain in a nice storage location. It's nice and secure inside this brain storage. <laughs> this might this might turn into something cool, man. Maybe it already is something cool. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Hopefully this does really lead to useful leaderboards for Wraithbinder as opposed to useless raid leaderboards. Yeah? Arma 3? What's Arma 3? Oh, it looks all realistic. This looks like Call of Duty almost. Okay, cool. So this is a... Uh, it's Battle Royale, huh? Looks like really good graphics. Yeah, realistic mil military shooter. Is it Battle Royale mechanics though? So last person left alive wins? Or are you on teams or something? Oh, okay, so there was a mode for it. Gotcha. 
Okay, so there's like a battle royale mode or a mod or something like that. Yeah, gotcha for Hunger Games E style. Do you think do you think Hunger Games inspired all these battle royale games? Cuz I know there was the there was the movie Battle Royale bef way before Hunger Games. Yeah, Battle Royale started in Arma and Minecraft. Okay. And Minecraft also had like a, a mod or a mode like that? Huh. I wonder about the inspiration though. Was it Hunger Games or was it ac the actual movie Battle Royale? I feel like it was Hunger Games that, that triggered all this. Yeah, my, it was a quicker, ver quicker version of play of Minecraft. Yeah, you think Hunger Games too? Cool. Yeah, I think it's. I think it was that. You can you can look back into the, at the, the movies and say, oh, the the battle royale movie came out sooner, so that's maybe why they named the whole genre of video games that. Who names the genre anyways? Who is the person that goes, yeah, I named that genre, or uh, I don't think it's any particular person. Oh, so Minecraft Hunger Games was huh? It was popular. Wow. Huh. The history, the roots. The roots of this game style. Yeah, I I guess I'm really glad to be kind of going into this blind. You know, I don't I don't really have any experience playing Arma 3 or Minecraft or Arma 3's Battle Royale or Minecraft's Hunger Games or I've never I've I've played PUBG, but I'm not really much. I played enough to die a few times. I never won. Um, and Fortnite, I've never played. So hopefully I do bring a real fresh perspective at this kind of game style. I'm not even sure if I really can cons consider this game in my mind to be a battle royale game. I mean, I mean it, it is. Of course it is kind of, it's a battle royale game. But um, in my mind, it's more of like a just song bringer, but multiplayer. You know, battling each other. <laughs> so hopefully I can bring a, per a fresh perspective at it. Something new. And uh, yeah, hopefully I make a million dollars. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Death, death match with Battle Royale elements. Right. Yeah. And I guess it's kind of creating its own unique elements too with the whole living on after you die thing. So that's cool. Sweet man, thanks for thanks for all your perspective on this. Yeah, for marketing, <laughs> yeah, probably. That's always that's always a pro and a con, right? When you're when you're when you're applying a phrase or a word to your game, you're right. For some people, but they hate battle royale. For some people, they love battle royale. So it's like, do you use that in your marketing or not? It's tricky probably you probably do because you want to because you want to put your you want to clearly depict what the game is to other players and probably the the clearest way to share what this game is is to call it a battle royale uh, yeah well 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 so let's see what time it is here I, I gotta get going sorry five gotta get some dinner yeah, man, I'm excited. To, thanks, thanks, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to make it. Um, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll grow day by day, and, and hopefully by Christmas it'll be playable. It'll be beta. Probably, probably it'll be a little bit longer than Christmas, but we'll see. <laughs> That's what I'm shooting for. Well, so um, thanks for watching this stream. Uh, thanks to everybody that's watching, lurking. And and uh, watching this on YouTube. Hello, everybody. And uh, yeah, take care, PMC. Take care, everybody. Uh, we'll see you guys all next time. Thanks for watching again.